I wanted to dive further into the Whore of Babylon story because I didn't like leaving a big gray area at the end. The whole story makes a lot more sense if Commodus is the last king. Septimius Severus was rather obscure. Commodus was well known and controversial. From his name, we get the word commode, meaning toilet. With the reign of Commodus, the Roman Empire marked the end of one era and the beginning of another. Rome, and especially the Western Roman Empire, began its slow descent down the toilet. And I mentioned this in the last video in passing, that there seemed to be a potential for some sort of counting problem revolving around King Number 8. The beast who once was and now is not is an eighth king. In other words, the eighth king is the return of a king. The eighth king is clearly not the seventh king. And I thought originally he might be the return of one of the first five emperors. So the last ten kings, or ten horns, are Vespasian through Commodus. The eighth king could also be the first horn Vespasian, but Vespasian was not a return of anything, and none of the original emperors of Rome returned for another run, which makes the eighth king allegorical, and an allegory I would have to crack. Unfortunately, Revelation 17 does not provide the answer, but Revelation 13 does. There are two beasts in Revelation 13. The first one is the beast in the Whore of Babylon story. This is the beast that comes out of the sea. The beast was given a mouth to utter proud words and blasphemies and to exercise its authority for 42 months. The beast is still the Roman Empire. Notice in this allegory the whore is missing. The 42 months is a reference to the invasion of Judea by Rome during the first Jewish-Roman War, a revolt which lasted from 66 to 70 CE. And the beast was given power to wage war against Christians and Jews. Indeed, Rome had the power to wage war on just about anyone they came across, and they exercised this power whenever they felt like it. Also also of note, the first Jewish-Roman war began under Emperor Nero and ended under Emperor Vespasian. One of the heads of the beast seemed to have a fatal wound, but the fatal wound had been healed. How exactly does a fatal wound become healed? This is a reference to resurrection and the eighth king. The second beast in Revelation 13 is the one that comes out of the earth, and this is the allegory that describes the nature of the eighth king. Then I saw a second beast coming out of the earth. It had two horns like a lamb, but it spoke like a dragon. It exercised all the authority of the first beast on its behalf and made the earth and its inhabitants worship the first beast whose fatal wound had been healed. While all the symbolism of the last half of Revelation 13 seems to point in one general direction, there are three allegories that I find interesting. First, the beast was healed from a fatal wound. In other words, a dead king has returned. Second, so that they could not buy or sell unless they had the mark, which is the name of the beast or the number of its name. This is an economic reference, and the first Jewish-Roman war was fought on economic grounds. The Jews of Judea even had their own coins printed, but this would soon end with Roman dominance. Also of note, Nero was extremely popular with plebeians, the masses. He was very controversial with patricians, the wealthy, because of his economic policies. The third allegory is the number of the beast. This calls for wisdom. Let the person who has insight calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. That number is 666. Of course, this number makes no sense at all. 666 is meaningless. There are many things that can be attached to the number of 666. It could be a reference to Earth, Moon, and Sun. It could be a reference to Antichrist, Lucifer, and Satan. It could be a reference to a three-headed hydra from Greek mythology. It could be a reference to 18 kittens of various color. The number is meaningless. Anyone can make anything out of this. I made the reference to 18 kings in my last video, but what if the number is wrong? Enter Papyrus 115. This is the earliest known fragment of Revelations, and it gives a different number for the beast. The number of the beast is 616. This is something entirely different, and instead of being a rather random number, 616 actually means something in the book of Revelation. Overlaying this number, 616, over the original Roman king's line, something interesting happens. The eighth king is a return of the sixth king. The eighth king is Nero, raised from the dead. The one is a reference to the one year of chaos in between the reign of Nero and risen Nero. But Vespasian was not only himself, he was also Nero reincarnated. Nero and Vespasian are both the eighth king and the body of the beast. And for a short time during Vespasian's rule, it would appear that there was every reason for Christians and Jews to believe that nothing had changed. Vespasian had Jerusalem destroyed in 70 CE. Some believed Nero had burned Rome in 64 CE, and of course he had blamed it on Christians. Vespasian's rule had two natures in regards to Judea. The first was when he had Jerusalem burned to the ground, but after 73 CE, Vespasian's rule didn't have much to do with Judea. He went on to be a relatively normal Roman emperor once the revolts in Judea were crushed. 
And in iconography, the number 616 does something else very interesting. It is not only a mention of the resurrected Nero that destroyed Jerusalem in 70 CE, but it is also graphically represented by the second beast. Then I saw a second beast coming out of the earth. It had two horns like a lamb, but it spoke like a dragon. Notice anything? That is 616, the mark of the beast. Nero wasn't just bad, he was the ultimate picture of evil incarnate. He was capable of being resurrected or channeled through another emperor, and apparently just the idea of Nero scared the bejesus out of Christians. And quite frankly, it should have. Nero was kind of a rough dude, especially on Christians. Nero committed suicide in 68 CE after being named an enemy of the state by the Roman Senate, and no one believed he died for good. Nero imposters popped up several times throughout Roman history, and people, for better or worse, were expecting Nero to return from the grave for the next couple centuries. But with the addition of Revelations 13, I believe that the problem of the king's list are finally solved. The final king, the tenth horn, is Commodus. The eighth king is an allegory to resurrected Nero. All the kings are real except the allegory of the eighth king. Though technically Vespasian is both the eighth king and the first horn, or first of the future kings, he has an entirely different character when claimed as the resurrected Nero. The eighth is by itself allegorical. The beast who once was and now is not is an eighth king. There were no zombie emperors, and Nero's return was purely figurative. But with the reign of resurrected Nero, the Roman king's list snaps into place perfectly, and the breakdown of the meaning of the seven-headed, ten-horned beast is complete.